Marcy, I'm so glad to have you on my account. I absolutely love your art and everything about it. Thank you, Tar. That is so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. Um, are you working on any new pieces currently? Yeah, I've, I've got a new collection of work that I'm working on right now. Um, I'm putting together a new collection this year um, of large body paintings or large scale paintings. Yeah, this, this new collection I'm excited about because the theme is around a poem that I wrote back in 2020 um, called My Rage is Like a Flower Garden. Okay. And so the collection is very floral and feminine in color palette but very ragey and yeah. aggressive expression. So yeah, it's cool. I'm excited. Awesome. Um, what has been your favorite collection that you've done so far? Um, that's really hard to say. Like I, I love each collection and each piece for different reasons for the significance that they hold whether it be what I was going through at the time of creating them or what that piece or what that collection really represents for me. Um, I mean, really like this current collection that I'm working on, I'm in love with it and I'm so excited about it just because it feels really authentic to me. But, you know, last year around this time, I was saying the same thing about my collection last year. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> um, each year, each collection that comes through is truer and truer to what I'm trying to express and to who I am as a person and who I am as an artist and my voice as an artist. So, um, yeah, every single one is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to say personally, only because I've actually seen this one in person, um, your emotions collection. I'm not sure if that's what it's called, but, yeah. um, that one's one of my favorites. Well, that was one of my favorite moments was photographing that with you in yeah. the same room at the same time. That was, um, yeah, that was a highlight. So there's moments like that from every collection where it's just like those memories that are attached to it that were really great. But the, the There Are No Bad Emotions collection and that, that series of paintings that you were there to witness and see, you know, that was when I really felt like I had found my voice and found what I was wanting to articulate as an artist. Yeah. That was the first time that I really felt like I was, I had found what I was wanting, the story I was wanting to tell and how I wanted to tell it. And um, so that collection will always have like a special place in my heart. Awesome. Um, I guess my next question would be, um, what made you want to get into art? Like, why did you choose, I guess, painting as your like expression? Yeah. I don't know that it was something I ever consciously chose. Yeah. I had always been creating art from my earliest memories and drawing or painting, um, you know, any form of art really from the time that I was a kid. And I, I honestly think like, you know, children are so inherently creative, like people in yeah. general, but like, especially when we're kids, we're so inherently creative. Like we, children especially are like living art. They're like the embodiment of what art is, right? Because they just, I mean, they turn everything into art. They, they create things out of nothing all the time. Their imaginations are so rich and so full. Um, and so I think it's one of those things that we either, you know, kind of get trained out of as we age and responsibilities take over. But for me, it was just something that's always been such a core part of my identity. And, um, you know, if it wasn't literal painting, you know, other forms of art were definitely present. So like creative writing, you know, writing is definitely a big passion of mine as well. And a lot of my work is accompanied by writing or essays or poems. Yeah. So. Um, there's always been some form of art in my life and some form of um, really just about like that expression. So, um, yeah, I think when I wasn't actively creating and making art, I definitely missed it. And there were parts of myself that just felt like unfulfilled or, you know, like what weren't being expressed or communicated. And so it was just one of those things that that. I just couldn't go without. Yeah. As far as, um, as far as like painting specifically, I think it's more just 
the method of expression that feels most natural and and color is really important for me. Uh, I really love color and I'm a very visual person. So that's just, it just fits. Okay. Where could people find your art if they want to go buy it? Yeah. So I've got my art in a couple of physical, physical locations locally. So currently I have work hanging up at Sonder in Abingdon. Um, so then I've got my um, what remains of my Her Story collection from last year. Those paintings are being housed at Sonder and available for purchase at Sonder along with a selection of prints um, that I have there. And then Holler House downtown on State Street in Bristol also has selected prints from previous collections that they retail there. Um, and then you can also go to my website. I have a website. It's called marcyparksart.com. Okay. You can go to marcyparksart.com, see all of my work, past and present, um, shop prints, shop stickers, all the things. And, um, yeah, you can also find my work on Instagram. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I know that you do a lot of, like, work in the community for not only, like, your art, but to allow other people to showcase their art as well. Um, and you do that through the Bristol and Bloom Festival. So tell me a little bit more about that and how that came to be. Woo, that's a long story. Um, <laughs> so growing up in this area, um, there just haven't been a lot of opportunities for artists. This just hasn't been a region that has had um, many opportunities for artists to share their work. Um, and it hasn't necessarily been a community that's supported the art. Um, and that maybe sounds a little harsh, but it's true. Um, yeah. There are there are and there have been several arts organizations in the area, and I don't want to discredit the work that they've done by any means, but there is a degree of gatekeeping that happens in those communities and in those organizations that prevents um, more of the working local artists here from being able to show their work in those settings. And so Bristol and Bloom was my way of creating an opportunity to not only give artists opportunity to show their work, but as a way of sort of educating the community around what original art is, um, why it's different from what you find at like Hobby Lobby or Walmart or wherever you go. And, and also to just showcase how rich this region is with artists. You know, we've got so many incredibly talented artists in this area and their work is all so different. And um, it's not just, you know, barns, bridges, and churches. Yeah. <laughs> which is what you can find in abundance here. It's, it's all very different and all um, so varied and so I just wanted to create an event that embraces more of what the the art that's actually being made in the area looks like and yeah. uh, embraces more of the artists that are actually working and creating work here and what what their work looks like and and creating um, a sense of community around those artists so that they do feel supported and they do want to keep their work here. Um, because for me, again, growing up here as an artist, I've just seen so many of my artistic peers move away because those opportunities weren't there. Yeah. And didn't want to move. I had already moved and came back <laughs> because I missed this area. And so I just decided to create an event to, again, sort of educate the community, bring attention and awareness to these these makers and creators in the region and and hopefully build a supportive community around them so that they dig their roots deeper into Appalachia. Okay. I know that it's mostly done in Bristol. Do you have like any plans to like expand it to maybe Johnson city or Kingsport or anywhere else? Uh, who no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not because like, not, you know, um, I feel like Bristol is a pretty good central location, right? Because we yeah. get Southwest Virginia, we get a lot of Northeast Tennessee. You know, Johnson City Public Art is already doing a ton of work for Johnson City. They're already they have the Art Struck Festival that happens in the spring, so they've got like a good supportive community there. 
um southwest virginia like abingdon they've got the highlands festival they've got the arts depot they've got the william king museum um they've got all those things there so bristol just doesn't really have aside from like holler house that yeah. opened downtown and the events that they're doing now bristol hasn't had that doesn't have like a hub and so um i want to keep it in bristol not only because it's centrally located but because you know we don't have as again as many opportunities in the area and then I'm also, I just have too much to do to try yeah. <laughs> and like, divide myself again and make another festival. That's understandable. Um, so I guess we'll finish this off. So my last question to you will be, is there anything else that I didn't ask you about that you would like people to know? Um, I don't, there's nothing else that I think I'm like dying for people to know necessarily. I, I just would like to encourage everybody or anybody who you know is listening to support the makers and creators that are in the area um support the artists that live here support the creators that live here support your work with the videos that you create and the content that you create you know it's it's worthy to invest in the region that you come from even if you know it feels like that region doesn't reflect your values or you know reflect you either you know by investing in the region and supporting the people that you want to support, you help to make the region and shape the region to reflect more of what you value. And so by by staying here, investing in this area, investing in the people here, investing in the people that you love and support and care about here, again, you help to create the community that you want to see. Um, so I would just encourage everybody, like, please, if you love local art, if you love the artists that live here, help keep them here. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I thank you for giving me this time. Um, it was super like awesome to see you because I haven't seen you since the Bristol and Bloom Festival. Um, mm -hmm. And I appreciate you just taking me up on this opportunity.